Ladies and gentlemen, in my last lecture, I discussed the virtue of justice and pride and productiveness. I pointed out that justice is the one specifically social virtue of the objectivist ethics, the virtue that pertains specifically to man's relationship with other men. I stated that self-interest is the only proper base and motive of human action, and that in their dealings with one another, men must neither grant sacrifices nor demand them. Among men who observe the principle of justice, men who do not grant sacrifices and who do not demand them, men who do not seek the unearned, there is no clash of interests. Such men deal with one another by voluntary consent, and only when they perceive that it is to their mutual benefit to do so. This is the only possible basis of social harmony and authentic goodwill among men. If men do attempt to gain the unearned and the undeserved, why then, of course, there are clashes of interest among them in the sense, you might say, that there is a clash of interests between a hold-up man and his victim. If men try to live by something other than reason and the mind, if they consider destruction a practical and valid means to gain their ends, if they hold their desires outside the context of reality and justice, if they feel free to place the I wish above the it is, and to act on their irrational wishes, then nothing but clashes of interest can exist among men. Neither harmony nor goodwill is possible in the society of cannibals. There is a very important formulation or statement in Galt's speech that I want to quote in this connection. Quote, the symbol of all relationships among rational men the moral symbol of respect for human beings is the traitor. We who live by values, not by loot, are traitors both in matter and in spirit. A traitor is a man who earns what he gets and does not give or take the undeserved. A traitor does not ask to be paid for his failures, nor does he ask to be loved for his flaws. A traitor does not squander his body as fodder or his soul as bonds. Just as he does not give his work except in trade for material values, so he does not give the values of his spirit, his love, his friendship, his esteem, except in payment and in trade for human virtues, in payment for his own selfish pleasure which he receives from men he can respect. Unquote. If you want to understand how the concept of the traitor principle applies to the spirit, and if you want to understand what is its alternative, and if you want to know whether or not that alternative is desirable, ask yourself whether you would wish to be loved selflessly. Ask yourself whether you wish to be loved by someone who gains nothing from loving you, who will tell you that he loves you not for your virtues, but for your weaknesses, that his motive is not admiration, but pity, that he wants to marry you only because he knows you need him, that he loves you not for any selfish pleasure he finds in your character, but only out of a sense of charity and duty. If your self-esteem recoils in revulsion at such a concept of love, question the motives and the psychology of those who advocate it as a moral ideal.